It's running pretty clean. Really excited. Ryan's Mobile One. So we've got a block ahead, a bunch of loosely organized parts sitting on the floor, a gasket set, the rest of an engine rebuild kit, and an empty telehandler to put it in. So let's get started. Bam. Did you identify where that oval is? Whereas there's not one here. We are there. That felt good. That's 22 bolts, 88 foot pounds, plus 180 degrees. A little low, this needs to go some more. into a corner a little bit last night by putting the cylinder head on and putting the I lubed everything up basically to push rods I can't see come back out so I'm committed to put at least a valve train on to hold those in I need to flip the engine put the oil pickup tube on basically you don't want this in place until your timing gears are there so before you do anything with the push rods or mounting anything on there the first thing you want to do is you want to look down the line of push rods and make sure that they're all bobbing up and down when you rotate the engine over. So we should be seeing every single one of those bobbing up and down. So pretty. I just do the same thing on these. I already put lube in all of these. This is just overkill now. I'm just making sure that the metal's not thirsty for anything. You got a little stud in the middle that you got to line up in the hole. Alright, we come around the back everything's in place come around the front and everything is so not in place you really got to babysit these things to get them to sit down in there what happens if you don't line these up you just tighten the bolts and they're sitting sideways bad things that's what bent push rods it's more important to have them on the push rods than it is to have them on the valves so the engine's 99% built as far as technicality, getting things done, getting all the parts present, machined, uh, and all that stuff. So all we got to do is slap the bottom cover, the bottom lid, the oil pan, and the top one. Uh, we got the valve train too, about, but this time I didn't film it because so many things on my plate, so many frustrations. I, I wanted to film the whole thing, but I couldn't, so I'm sorry. But I'll make it up to you. I will leave a link in the description where you can get the whole service manual. Every nitpicking little detail that you're going to need. And I'll put it in there. As far as video stuff goes, it's like to do the valve train, it's like a few bolts. And then you just got to adjust the stuff. And you need the manual. I'd have that in front of you before doing it anyway. That's why I gave it to you. So you're welcome. We're going to accelerate through and uh, show you the rest of it and show you the magic moment of starting it up and having it run. Enjoy! This is what the oil pan gasket looks like. The bolts all line up pretty good. No they don't. You see how the bolts here are covered up on the back? And then you got this overhang. And these don't even line up. If I line these ones up, these don't line up. So I'm going to do gasket maker for that too. Hours later and several text messages. I'm ready to put this on. Any kind of oil pan gasket where you got these uh, seams, splits, cracks, whatever you want to call them. No, I just fill in these cracks. So timing cover's on. That rear cover thingy is on. No, the oil pan's on. Just look at a bolt on this side. Get it real good and centered. Look at a bolt here. Do the same thing. Kind of squish it on there. Just give a little wiggle. Bam. Um. Next, to get the valve cover on, it's the easiest thing ever. There's a couple bolts on each side here, 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 and here, and then one on each end, and you're done just don't over tighten it on that cork gasket and you'll be in good shape so i got the engine done everything's hooked up ready to go i had to just get on it i got so many people waiting for me to look at their stuff shouldn't even do that anymore but got all the injectors everything's tight everything's good coming right around you can see timing cover uh, alternator bracket uh, intake manifold exhaust manifold Glow plug doohickey, fuel pump block off plate, we switched it to electric, oil filter adapter, block off plate, bell housing. This actually bolts up to a torque converter, which is crazy. Speaking of which, I got a 
lube the crap out of this thing. So I'm just gonna just lube or slime the heck out of it. So when we go to do this, it'll move freely, not bind and get jacked up. Uh, continuing on with our tour, there's a coolant bypass that goes to the heater, our oil filter, oil filter adapter, oil sending unit, uh, distributor pump assembly. What a beautiful sight. There's your oil filler. Thing's a thing of beauty. Except for that, that looks like crap. <laughs> there we go. So we use gaffing tape like you use for filming to keep things from sliding off the end. But we just got the motor put in. So I did get the engine finished on the Perkins rebuild for the telehandler. The whole goal is to get that done in time so that I can unload the building with it and then progress into just building the building with it. The bad news is, once I got the engine rebuilt, it did not run. Here's how that went. So I worked on it and worked on it, and I thought it was a fuel problem, I thought it was a fuel filter housing problem, and then part of looking into the fuel filter housing, replacing all the O-rings and things, because with diesels, you got to have pressure. you got to have fuel pressure. you got to have compression. It's compression ignition. Uh, so long story short, when I was doing the housing, I discovered I did a pro I messed up something with an O-ring. But that's not before I went through all kinds of havoc. It's so stinking close. We've seen them even with this injector pump pumping it but for whatever reason it just won't run uh, testing the fuel injectors cleaning them re-cleaning them um, but basically I fixed the o-ring and BAM fire dried up it's sounding pretty good As you can see, I used it for the building, I used it for setting the columns, I used it for setting all kinds of stuff. I put a basket on it, a man basket, and we hung all the sheets using that. And uh, it was just such an incredible boon. Machine rental time is expensive, so you want to move everything off your schedule. If you got a machine for three days, you're going to work all three days. You're going to get lots of people together. Unfortunately, I live in the middle of nowhere, and a lot of people work during the day, so I couldn't do that. So having this telehandler was wonderful because then I could work in the evenings a little bit. I could work on weekends and it was just awesome. The building's going awesome. I'm going to do another series of videos. I'm like I'm writing checks with what I'm saying that hopefully I'll be able to cash in a timely fashion. Uh, time's been of the essence lately. But uh, the building turned out awesome. I've got everything but the front door on it. Um, so it's full of dirt and garbage. <laughs> But uh, we'll get the door on it and hopefully I'll be shooting videos like this in there in the near future. That would be wonderful. So this is the new door. Just getting finishing touches on it, getting it tuned up. Did a jack shaft opener on this one. Same as we did in the garage. Had some help this time from Richard Wagner of Wagner Garage Doors. He's been killing it on uh, getting a good price and a good install going. In order to film this, I had to get my wife's car out of here and uh, clear everything out. And it was a little bit of a pain, but you're worth it. I love sharing stuff with you guys because you guys, all the thank yous in the comments, all the people where I'm able to help them. One such person wrote me a letter this week. I'd like to share it with you. So I was so excited to get a, a letter. This letter actually broke this long drought, so I was even that much more excited to get it. I don't know why physical handwritten mail is so fun or even if it's typed, but this is fun. This is from Nathan Oldroyd from Highland, Utah, and a handwritten letter, like I say, and he says, and I'm not making this up, this is really what he says. He says, what's up, homie? How's your day been going so far? Did you learn any mind-numbing facts about outer space or something? Maybe discover some brain-boggling trick or whatever. He thinks I'm smart. <laughs> I've got somebody full. Yes. It's kidding. I do know a lot about a lot of stuff, but, you know, there's a lot smarter people than I am. Anyway, uh, he discovered my videos when he was working on 2007 Subaru Impreza. He bought it for a killer deal. He took on a transmission job and he nailed it. Uh, he did the transmission swap. It worked great. Uh, it worked amazing. He says he drove it in the transmission smooth like a newborn bum. 
Uh, he grinned with glee. He's really happy. He's been flipping cars since. He discovered I live in Cedar Valley, uh, Utah. And he's like, what the heck? I have never actually been there. It sounds super familiar. And he finds out it's 30 minutes from Highland, so that's awesome. Uh, so anyway, he says that I have saved him a crap ton of money. He's truly empowered me to understand and fix my vehicles. That's the whole purpose of my channel is to provide service and help you guys. It happens to be uh, part of how I make a living too now, which is really cool because that's just the way things go. You can't help somebody else without it helping you. You can't hurt somebody else without it hurting you. Um, it's karma. There's a lot of names for it. A lot of different people recognize it, and even though they call it by different names, I know that it's something that's pretty legit. And that's why I started doing YouTube videos because I can multiply the service. Saying, what do I do? You know, I'm a I'm a third generation mechanic. I've been doing it more than 10,000 hours, probably 14 to 16,000 hours. So that's my skill. I was thinking, you know, because if you if you write a song, that's a way to make money, multiply it, send it out. But the main thing is, is it's not just to make money. If you're helping people, you're compensated for it. So, uh, I believe in God. I don't know if you guys do. I don't know exactly all the attributes of Him, but life makes too much sense. There are too many things that are just tricky, uh, orchestrated, balanced, uh, the timing of it, you know, like the Garth Brooks song, you know, some, some of God's greatest gifts are unanswered prayers. There's a certain order to life. And so that's just something that I just, I knew if I could help people and then multiply it through YouTube, that that would multiply my ability to help people. And at first there's no way to make money. Anyway, I'm not going to ramble too much longer. Anyway, it says, P.S. There are more atoms in your eye than stars in the sky. And it's even like a poem. Pretty mind numbing, eh? So this guy's into, he's excited about learning. That's the way I am most of the time when I'm not burned out. So I, I took a couple of weeks off. I don't know if anybody noticed that. I love sharing videos with you guys. I love learning new things. I love working on cars. I feel so blessed to have the job of YouTuber. Like all these kids are like, I want to be a YouTuber when I grow up. That wasn't even, an, that wasn't even on the radar. I want to be a helicopter pilot. And ironically, uh, I get to fly paramotors now. I get to... Uh, like today, when I was working on the fire for the sheriff's department, I got to see all kinds of cool helicopters come through. I saw, uh, I won't bore you with all the different ones, but some of my favorites, like an Ericsson Sky Train, that was freaking awesome. Uh, I saw that. I saw a Blackhawk, the civilian model that's owned by a fire company. I think it was Los Angeles Canyon or something, sent it out. We got the two biggest fires in the country burning right now in Utah. So. Uh, I spent 12 hours on it yesterday, 12 hours again tomorrow. When you're watching this, I'll probably, if you watch it the first day, I'll probably be working on that fire in, uh, in Woodland Hills. So, or I might be up uh, Diamond Fork. You never know. It's a big county. Uh, but anyway, thanks for the letter. That was awesome. This will probably have to suffice as the B fate. It'll probably be cards for these videos that I mentioned uh, here. Thanks so much for the support of the channel. Thanks for being in the B mob. Thanks for uh, being in the notification squad and be mobbing it when it first comes out. That really helps people to find it. And uh, what a blessing it is to be able to share these things with you guys. And what a blessing it is to hear back from you. So if you want to send a letter or a postcard, this is my address. I love getting snail mail. I don't know why. I'm just a goof. Maybe it's because I'm old. <laughs> I don't know. I'm only 40. I'm not that old. I feel like I'm 25. That's why I was, anyway, that's why I dress the way I dress. That's why I do the things that I do. And uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. Thanks for watching. Cheers. You've got to leave y'all. It's probably going to have to go over the top of all the group. Is he waiting direction? There it is. That's in the exact same spot where he dumped before. Look at all that wildlife is running amok. Oh, it's got to climb. Dump number two. And these aren't little dumps, these are huge. We'll go over there to the Way into it again.